inspire, empower, grab your girls and soar a little higher, unlock the fire in you, cause real women don't bitch, no, real women don't, 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 bitch. Hey, 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 thank you for joining me on the Real Women Don't Bitch podcast. This is your proud host, August Crenshaw, a.k.a. Mrs. Raw, Real and Relentless. I am the number one advanced mental conditioning specialist for entrepreneurs because building mental muscle is necessary in order to implement successful business strategies. This show has been created for the woman who is not excuse driven and needs help building a profitable business. I will be interviewing women from various fields who are willing to break the silence on struggles that specifically affect female entrepreneurs. Welcome to a show where I and guest speakers from time to time share our methods that help us beast our business no matter what is going on in our lives. Whether you are an online or brick and mortar business owner, this show is for you. We will hit every angle, personal, professional, and spiritual. Why? Because on any given day, you get hit with shit from a scenario involving one, more, or perhaps all of the above. It all impacts you and your mindset towards your business. I have made it my personal mission to provide a space where we dive deep into the BS we face on a day-to-day basis. To barter or not to barter, that is the question. And my flat out answer is no. And there are quite a few entrepreneurs who, as soon as they hear that, they may be like, August, that's really, really stupid. You're probably missing out on a lot of opportunities to get what you want or what you need for your business. And and the startups, a lot of times, that's what they have to do. Trust me, I understand. And it's not that I haven't done it before. It's just that it's going and growing. I say, don't do it. I've been in that situation where it's like, oh, okay, well, you want this for me and I need this from you. And a person has been like, well, I don't have the money to get it. But if I provide my service to you, how about you let me have that? And what I have found is there's always that mix up of, okay, what you're giving, how are you placing your value on it? And are you giving me the most excellent thing that you have to give? Or are you going through the motions and giving me something as opposed to me just saying, you know what, let's just trade money flat out for hypothetically, if I charge $500 a month for coaching, I don't, I'm just using easy numbers. If I charge $500 a month for coaching and that's what I charge you, but I want to get four massages and you charge $125 per massage per month, then I'm just going to pay you because here are some of the things that happen that make bartering really, really ugly. People have a tendency to devalue what they offer to kind of try to make it fit so that they can be able to give this so-called even exchange. And you may offer something and say, okay, well, I could do all of this for them, especially since they're bartering with me and I can throw this in there and you may actually give a little extra or you devalue what you're doing. And eventually over time, because there is no financial exchange, the amount of energy that should be put into the effort is not there. People don't meet deadlines. They don't massage you as thoroughly. They don't uh, package things the way that they would have done it if you were a regular client. The other thing is, is when you get to bartering and there's like not a defined thing where it's 10 of these things for five of these things because of the pricing, and it is solely based on perception, a lot of people walk away from the situation feeling like, You got what you wanted from me. And then there's the other person who feels like I didn't get what I was expecting out of this deal. My thing is, is if you're going to barter, you need to make sure that it is is something measurable and that you know what the price tag is on it. Because I'm not, no, nothing is 100% one way. 
And if somebody were to say so, August, honestly, you don't really think that it would be wisdom for a new entrepreneur to barter this service. I'm not saying that it never works, but I am saying to be very cautious before you make that kind of decision. And what happens with a lot of people when they barter, it's kind of like this la la thing. For instance, it could be something like me saying, I'll coach you. And in, in exchange, you do my Facebook ads. Well, I may coach the hell out of you and teach you how to get more clients and give you great sales strategies or something like that. You're getting out there, you're booming in your business and you're making money. But as you're working with me, even you might even be doing a good job at what you do. But I'm not seeing, you know, the conversions with my ads. I'm not making money from the ads. And it's kind of like, wow, you know, this was a waste of money. Another thing that can happen with people is that you could get psychologically duped up into saying, wow, I can't understand why I even did this. For instance, if you were doing my website because you're a graphic designer, even though you could do websites in your sleep, you may be working on my website for four or five days at a few hours at a time because you're going through the whole thing and something crazy technologically happens and you got to work through a glitch. But when I coach you, you got your one session. We talk for about 60 minutes and you're going on about your business. And sometimes the morale is broken down on the other person. Cause it's like, wow, I traded this and all they're doing is sitting down and they're talking to me for one hour. They only did this two or three times a month. And I'm still working like a dog to get their stuff done. And it could feel lopsided when in all actuality, it isn't lopsided because I I put a price tag and a value on my time. And while that other individual may have had a value for their service, because some things came up time wise, they don't feel as good anymore. And then people want to come back to the table and try to say, well, you owe me this, or we should do this. And the bottom line is people end up not feeling like they're getting what they're worth. And then the likelihood is higher for the relationship to potentially end on not so good terms or like I said, feeling with a situation where it's feeling lopsided. One person isn't as thoroughly satisfied as the other. So I don't know where you are and I don't know how you feel about bartering. It's just that I'm really, really not for it. And I am a firm believer in if you can't pay for it, then you need to accept the fact that you obviously are not ready for it. If there's something that I want from someone and there's a mutual need on their side and my side, it's you pay me and I pay you. I can, there's a woman I work with right now. I happen to coach her. She has a very unique service that I like. And guess what? When she sends me the bill, I pay. When I send her the bill, she pays. And each person gets their money when they're supposed to get it and they do what they're supposed to do. I don't know about you guys, but I literally have a calendar and I look at it and I know that there are specific days of the month that I'm supposed to get paid. I know when my invoices go out, even though it's on automatic bill pay, I still look to see. I check my bank accounts to make sure that I see that the money's being deposited and so on and so forth. And guess what? Playing that game of, well, your payment was due on the fifth of the month, but this person's payment wasn't due until the 20 of the month. What do we do when I've already rendered my service, but you haven't rendered yours and I haven't got paid, but you're going to get paid. All of that confusion, it just minimizes it. So where are you when it comes to bartering and how do you feel about it? I would love to hear some feedback. Have you been burned? Have you had great experiences? If you had great experiences, what kind of boundaries did you set up? What did you do to make sure that it would be the most pleasurable experience possible? If it wasn't a pleasurable experience, what were some of those key elements that really, really made it feel awful? So today's segment was quick and to the point to barter or not to barter. I say no, take your time, save, invest properly, pay for what you want and let things happen when they're supposed to. Just exchange money, circulate it, let it go round and round and back and forth, but minimize the potential for an individual to be evaluating the value of your service versus theirs, especially when things aren't working out the way they want them to time-wise. So this is a juicy one. I think this is a really juicy one, but where it goes and where we take it, it will be contingent upon your responses. So looking forward to hearing back from you. All right, there's your nugget for the day. I'm out of here. 
Thank you for joining me today. Remember to cultivate a mindset that is biased towards taking action. No bitching, whining, or complaining. Here, our mantra is, real women don't bitch, we get shit done. See you next week as I continue to bring you what you need to keep your head in the game and beast your business. Don't forget to hit subscribe and leave us a five-star review. Would you like a specific topic covered? Have a question you would like answered live? Then head on over to realwomendon'tbitchpodcast.com. Subscribe to my email list. Hit me up and I got you. Interested in being a guest speaker? You walk the walk? Then you can sign up on the website too. This is your number one advanced mental conditioning specialist for entrepreneurs, Mrs. Raw, Real, and Relentless. Signing out. Deuces. Inspire, empower, grab your girls and soar a little higher, unlock the fire in you.